Speaking of billions of dollars, $530 million stolen from a, uh, a crypto exchange called <laughs> CoinCheck in Japan. Stolen entirely. I thought the whole idea behind, you know, sort of blockchain and crypto was that we could track it. We could know who had it at any given time. Uh, this raises the total of, of cryptocurrencies that have been stolen from these, the, these exchanges over time to it. Now a billion dollars. What right. is going on here? And, and why can't they just, if they know where it is, take it back? Well, that's, that's a really good question. So in theory, we're not supposed to know where it is. In this distributed cloud processing they have, there is no one person who knows all the different sources. What I have been worried about from the beginning in all this is what would stop somebody, not from, in this case, stealing a large number of these coins, but simply producing counterfeit coins. They don't have to produce a million of them, just three or four a day. But in the case of Bitcoin, if they were $20,000 each, you could make a nice little living doing that. Oh, Marvin, don't worry about it. The security is built in in this distributed model and what we're seeing in this case coin check this is a Japanese uh, company also by the way in Japan this coin check company their currency is called NEM it is actually very well used it trades for about a buck a coin and it's used by many different businesses but it's inevitable that if you become as big as some of these cryptocurrencies are hackers wherever they are Macedonia North North Korea China they're going to want to get in there and start messing around and this is the part that's always worried me well and and banks didn't have insurance for from the get go, they got insurance because they kept getting robbed and the, you know, the, the, the not only the regulators, but the, 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 the consumers, the customers out there demanded it. It'll be interesting to see where this goes from here. And on the flip side of that, I guess, the concerns over cryptocurrencies and, and Bitcoin in general, uh, we're seeing Omers, the big Ontario Municipal Pension Fund, investing, right. what is it, $50 million into an Ethereum company? Right. So first, let's put that in context. OMERS, this big pension fund for municipal employees, controls $77 billion worth of assets. $50 million is less than one-tenth of 1% 1 of the assets. So not like they're taking it and betting it all on a horse race here. I think the way they look at it is much of this money is invested in blue chips. What, what are they doing here? They're just taking a risk. It's like buying a lottery ticket. If the world is going toward cryptocurrency and if this platform, Ethereum, is really the way of the future, they're getting it on the ground floor. Or a $50 million investment could become worth a billion down the road. On the other hand, if it all goes belly up and it doesn't go anywhere, they risk so little. So for them, it just adds a little bit of risk to a portfolio that is fairly riskless. Does it speak, though, to the legitimization of the crypto world that when, when a pension fund, you know, this, this isn't some startup or fly-by-night right. operation, this is a huge fund that, that you know, an established institution, uh, that, that they're investing in this. Does it add to the legitimacy of the broader story? Oh, absolutely. And in fact, everyone, Bank of Canada just a couple of months ago said that they were looking into right. virtual currencies, maybe cryptocurrencies in the future. Remember, I'm an old guy. I still walk around with currency in my wallet. I never leave home without less than 50 bucks in my wallet <laughs> because that's the way I was raised. The people I teach at a university, they never leave home without their phone. They don't carry currency. They only carry virtual currency in that sense. Cryptocurrency plays into that. Now, I'm not sure where it's all going. Nobody does. So if you're trying to bet it doesn't hurt to have a little bit on this platform, a little bit on this platform, right. just to see what may come out of this. And this, by the way, this Ethereum is the platform that Ether, this is a competitor yeah. currency to Bitcoin, uh, uses, but is also used by some of the other cryptocurrencies out there. It's a rather small investment in a big space. I give them, the Omers quite a bit of credit for jumping in. All right, we've got to leave it there. Marvin, thanks for this as always. Marvin Ryder, Assistant Professor at McMaster University.